Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 19th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause, whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh." Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, is it not better, or is it better not to marry? He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the teaching that we have today concerning marriage and divorce is one that in order to really go into great detail, it would take uh, several hours for us to dissect all that Jesus is talking about here. But there's a couple of main things that we can mention today that I think are very important uh, that was in Jesus' emphasis. One of the things that was going on is that the Pharisees, in approaching Jesus to test him, were trying to determine and and, uh, trying to force him to reveal which of the two schools of Hebrew thought he endorsed concerning marriage. There were two basically houses of thought about a number of things uh, in the Torah, the book of the law. And uh, one of those, of course, was the issue of marriage and divorce. And the two schools were named after two of the sages of, in uh, Jewish leadership uh, back at the uh, end of the uh, first century uh, B.C. and the first century A.D., so just around the time of Jesus. And these two schools were called Bet Shammai and Bet Hillel. And basically, they were very different in the way that they interpreted the law of God. Uh, Bet Hillel, for example, uh, was very flexible in the way that they understood the, uh, the work of Um, the Torah and how it was being used. And so basically Beit Hillel would say that you can get divorced for any reason. If uh, a woman maybe doesn't clean the dishes correctly, her husband could divorce her. I mean, that's an extreme example. But I mean, they gave plenty of portfolio. Uh, Beit Shammai was much more strict and that school of thought was that there's only one reason, and that would be for indecency, for uh, adulterous behavior. And it was in response to that, rather than pushing either school or revealing one school is preferential over the other, Jesus does something very powerful, and that he goes back to the original intent of marriage to begin with. And so he said, have you not read from the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. 
So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. What he was doing is going back to an understanding of the fact that marriage was a covenant established before God. A covenant is more than just a contract or an agreement. A covenant is uh, a walk unto death with another person in relationship. Covenants were established between kingdoms. Covenants were established between God and his children, Israel. There's the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, and the list goes on. All of these different covenants are ways in which God and man were to work together. And again, he was pointing out here, Jesus was, that marriage is also a covenant, something that was underscored in the prophet Malachi's writings, where he talks about the fact that that they were uh, formed as a covenant. And that covenant means that the two have become one, that in a sense, they are inseparable one for the other. And so Jesus was going back to the original intent of marriage, that marriage was something that we don't enter into from the standpoint of how can we get out of it, but rather entered into with the aspect that this is something permanent in my life, and I intend to live out my life faithfully with the other person. Now, we know, of course, that there are situations Uh, especially not only in today's world, but throughout the history of the church where there has been divorce. And we also know that uh, there are varieties of things that uh, are a part of what's going on in marriage today. But I think that one of the keys that we should bring out of today's reading is just that essential, powerful image that Jesus brings forth, that The creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. That is God's intent for marriage is the two become one. And as as Jesus underscored, therefore was what God has joined together. No human being must separate. Again, there are exceptions, but let's not make the norm the exception, but rather look to the high state of marriage as God intended it and rejoice in the fact that uh, he has um, healing and help and hope for those who have gone through the, the uh, horror of divorce. But he also has a great desire that marriage remain a strong and ford- formidable uh, entity in our society. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as always, it's good to be with you. Lord willing, we will be together tomorrow for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.